Okay, so look. Genshin Impact, MiHoYo, just dropped a ton of information for us, and uh, it's quite overwhelming. But I, I guess it kind of makes sense because this is the Lantern Rite Festival, and MiHoYo goes super hard for this event. Let me just show you their Twitter page really quickly, starting from the bottom and then moving our way up. And again, they just dropped so much information for us. First, starting with the weapon banner here, although it kind of seems like it's out of order because this weapon banner is going to be coming in the second half of 2.4. And then we got some more login rewards, a lot of login rewards, actually. They're pretty nice. And then they gave us a little bit more information on the Calamity Queller. And this weapon is, uh, this weapon's pretty cracked. Base attack is kind of insane but we'll talk about this weapon in a little bit and then we're also going to be getting an archon quest but of course if you watch the live stream you kind of already know that and then they revealed the first half of the weapon banner first here but we're getting two pole arms for the five star weapon event wishes pretty sure that's the first time this has ever happened so you know all those fan theories where people try to predict the weapon banners and character banners based on patterns well mihoyo just says uh screw you we're just gonna do whatever the hell we want and then we got the character banners that's coming although again kind of in a really weird order how they posted this they kind of probably just did it all at once but anyway zhang li and then we're getting xing chu beto and yan fei second half and then xiao yunjin ningguang and chang Yoon first half and Xiao and Shenha are gonna share the same banners and Ganyu will share the same banner as Zhongli so the same four stars here and for Shenha the same four stars as Xiao and then we move up we got a little bit more information Zhongli's birthday is here I think you can log in and grab a dream solvent so you should definitely go ahead and do that and then here we go we got the login reward so day one day two day three day four day five we're getting some fragile resin some artifact xp some talent materials some more um, and some food as well so yeah they're going hard on these rewards for the lantern right and then these are the seven day rewards lots of mora lots of fates 10 fates here and then the free four stars as well as the free ningguang skin so definitely pick this up and um which four star are you gonna pick here i think it definitely depends on where you're at in the game and how many constellations you have for each of these characters and then if you're planning to pull for shenha or if you have any cryo characters you want to level up as well you should definitely just do this web event this takes like five minutes maybe 10 minutes at most you'll get 40 Prima Gems, I believe, and some Ice Ascension Materials. Cryo Ascension Materials. Apologies. At the time of making this video, they did reveal Yai Miko coming in 2.5. But we won't be talking about Yai in this video. So choosing between Shenha and Xiao, let's go ahead and start with that. Xiao is going to be your Animo DPS carry, very obvious. And then Shenha is going to be your Cryo Support. So MiHoYo classifies Shenha as a Cryo Support character, but really when these characters come out, it's the players and their creativity that really solidifies their role once they've actually come to the game. So we'll see where Shenha falls. However, based on her kit, it really does seem like she is going to be a support character for Cryo characters. A lot of people are saying that she is there to support either Ganyu and Ayaka. So if you don't have either of those characters, you probably shouldn't go for Shenha. However, my opinion, she very solidly supports any Cryo character, including the four stars that we currently have in the game, like Chong Yoon, who is on on her banner and Rosaria as well. The way that Shenha's flat damage bonus is going to work and in order to get the most mileage for it, you need to put it on characters that are heavily invested into. So I guess on the other hand, usually most people will not invest into their four star characters and instead will more highly invest in their five star characters. So that means Shenha's flat damage bonus will be much better on characters like Ganyu and Ayaka because they're going to be way better built than say your average Chong Yoon and Rosaria as Chong Yoon is not very popular and a lot of people just kind of toss away four stars. So yeah, Shenha is not only there to support the likes of either Ganyu or Ayaka. If you have tons of damage bonus on Chong Yoon or Rosaria, they can definitely take advantage of Shenha's flat damage bonus just as well as either Ayaka or Ganyu. And also if you build up their crit. And then when it comes to Xiao, he's a very strong animal DPS carry character. So if you're looking for a carry, a DPS character, Xiao is definitely not a bad pick. His damage is very good, although he does have his share of problems. The thing about Xiao is that he can definitely get buffed sometime in the future. This is because currently right now, he doesn't have his own dedicated artifact set, as well as he doesn't have a dedicated four-star support, like a lot of the characters in Genshin Impact are kind of getting. Prime example being 
Arataki Ito with Goro, and Raiden Shogun with Sara. So if Xiao gets these buffs, these new artifact sets, and a dedicated 4-star character, his damage is just going to be going up. However, he does have his share of problems, and one of those being that his plunge attack kind of makes the AI in this game go dumb, and sometimes that doesn't work in your favor, although sometimes it can work in your favor because you can force the enemy to do certain attacks. Another problem with Xiao is that against smaller enemies, and against enemies that can get knocked back, his plunge attack sometimes pushes the enemies back a little bit too far, making it so that you have to chase them down in order to attack them. If you have to reposition in order to hit these enemies, then sometimes you go out of range in hitting other enemies, and then your DPS is going to go down a little bit. Shadow Constellations are also a little bit iffy. The ones that are in the middle, especially his C2 and his C4, just... They're not very good. One increases his energy recharge and the other increases his defense. Typical Shao teams make it so that Shao doesn't really need this energy recharge buff. However, his C6 and his C1 are both really good constellations. So, so if this is your chance to get a C1 Shao, I bet you guys already have decided that you definitely want a C1 Shao. Getting an extra charge here is more energy and more damage. And then C6 just kind of makes him into a completely different character. It's unfortunate that it's all the way down here though. So keep those things in mind, some of those problems, but then also the fact that he's a really good animo DPS character. So if you need a DPS character, Xiao is not a bad pick. But of course, remember, we have Ganyu and Zhongli coming in the second half, so you might want to weigh your pros and cons between Xiao and Ganyu. Now let's go ahead and move on to the four-star characters. We got Ningguang, Changyun, and then Yunjin. And I think that these characters make a lot of sense as to why they're showing up, because Mihoyo, again, they do whatever they want, right? They don't make banners based off of a meta perspective perspective in most cases and they've kind of said this at some point i'm pretty sure but they said that banners are more so going to be catered towards the current event that's happening this is also why they went with the double wish system because that way they're able to feature more characters that fit in with the current patch and its story so ningguang is a very big focus coming in the next patch because we're trying to rebuild the jade chamber and changyun is a fellow exorcist very similar to shen he so it makes sense why changyun is coming from a lore perspective and then yun jin is also from a lore perspective because of the lantern right she's there to perform some opera so it makes sense maybe not from a meta perspective on why ningguang is here but from a lore perspective definitely Anyway, let's talk about Ningguang. She's a very solid burst DPS Geo character. Her elemental burst here can do a lot of damage if she is properly built. It's also super low cooldown, so this thing can be pretty spammable. Ningguang works really great as a burst sub DPS character, so she's a very solid unit to grab if you don't have her, and also her constellations make her burst DPS even better. She can also work as a support character for Geo characters as her Jade screen provides a 12% Geo damage bonus if you pass through it. As well as the fact that with her Constellation, she can get two Jade screens and produce twice as many energy particles. However, do know that there's a cooldown on the energy generation, so don't double spam this because if you spam it twice in a row, the second one will not generate particles. That cooldown comes from C2, so definitely if you want to run Ningguang as a support character, picking up a C2 will make that a lot better. Ningguang's C6 increases her burst damage potential even more because she gains 7 star jades so that after she pops her elemental burst, she can let off a charge attack to deal even more damage. So if you want to main Ningguang as that burst DPS character, trying to hit C6 is incredibly vital. Next up, we got Changyun, I think one of the most underrated characters in this game, to be honest, and and also, I think he has definitely one of the coolest idle animations as well. Anyway, this guy is also a burst DPS character. His elemental burst is a very low cooldown, the same as Ningguang, 40 cost and 12 second cooldown, and has massive cryo damage scaling, 271, and he will rain down three of these ice blades, so you multiply this by three. He also has the ability to infuse characters' weapons with cryo, so, you know, you can start running cryo-infused characters and go for a cryo main DPS playstyle. So for example, right, if you're going for Shenha, you could go for a main carry playstyle where you infuse Shenha's normal attacks with Cryo, or if you have a Rosaria, you can do a very similar thing. He's also got some extra normal attack speed on his E skill. Also the fact that he has a Cryo Res decrease of 10% on his E skill as well. 
So Chang Yun's definitely got a lot of really great support capabilities, as well as very high potential damage on his elemental burst, especially if mounted. In terms of constellations, I think that his C2 and his C6 are really good, as the C2 will reduce cooldown time of elemental skills and burst by 15%, and this actually can make quite a big difference in a lot of situations, even if you don't actually notice it. And then this one just adds an extra spirit blade to his elemental burst, so now you are dealing four times that damage that we saw earlier. It also ends up dealing more damage to opponents with a lower percentage of their max HP remaining than Chong Yun. So this is just extra damage on top of extra damage. Chong Yun's burst DPS really gets even better with his C6. And then for Yun Jin, Yun Jin is a solid support character, Geo Element. Yun Jin is of the Geo Element, and she will provide damage bonuses towards normal attacks as well as more bonuses to normal attacks. So a lot of characters that are focused on normal attacks will definitely like Yun Jin as a support character. Yun Jin also provides a shield as well, so she's also going to offer some survivability. The really weird thing about Yun Jin's kit is that she splits her scaling on two different stats. Her damage bonus is based off of her defense, and her shield is based off of her HP. Yunjin's damage is also based on her defense, so you kind of have a couple of different options on how you want to build your Yunjin. Do you want to build her as a shield support, or do you want to build her as a damage support? If you're going for a damage support, then you want to build on defense. If you want to build her as a shield support, then you build on HP. However, I think that if you already have a Zhongli, then you don't need to build your Yunjin for HP. However, if you don't have that, then building Yunjin for HP is not a bad idea. It's definitely an option, and options are good. Now, currently in the game, there are not very many normal attack focused characters. So in terms of a support perspective, Yunjin doesn't really support very many characters in the game currently until we get more characters that are focused on normal attacks. So characters that are really focused on normal attacks are characters like Razor, Diluc to an extent, a main DPS physical official as she has a weapon that directly increases and busts this type of playstyle. Although Ningguang is more focused on burst DPS, if you want to keep Ningguang on the field, then she will definitely be using her normal attacks. Eula is also pretty normal attack focused, so she can definitely support that. Yanfei is also a little bit normal attack focused, although most of her damage comes from her charge attacks. She has to use normal attacks in order to get Scarlet Seals. While in melee form, Tartaglia definitely uses some of his normal attacks, although that's not a big focus for his damage. Arataki Ito as well, although he is definitely more charge attack focused, he does have to do some normal attacks in order to get stacks. Kokumi as well, when in her burst, definitely spams a lot of normal attacks. Raiden Shogun is a no-no because while in her elemental burst, her attacks are considered elemental burst damage and not normal attack damage. However, even though those are the characters that I highlighted, this doesn't mean that you can't build other characters to be normal attack focus. So right, for example, you can definitely build your Beto to be an on-field physical carry. We can definitely go with something like a Thunder Soother or a Gladiator set in order to increase that normal attack damage. Or we can go with a Blood Flame set and go for physical damage. Yunjin is also a new character, so it'll definitely be fun trying her out. And if you've already C6 a lot of those Liwa 4 star characters, then Yunjin is probably definitely going to be your pick, as she's also going to be a free 4 star character that you can choose later on in the 2.5 events. All right, now let's go ahead and talk about polearm impact. We got three polearms coming in on the first half of the weapon banner. Calamity Queller, which is Shen He's signature weapon, and then the Primordial Jade Wing Spear, which is supposed to be Xiao's signature weapon, although it's not his best in slot, actually. And then we got our four-star lineup, the Favonius Warbow, the Favonius Greatsword, the Widsith, the Flute, and the Lithic Spear. Yeah, Mihoyo does not care about your fan theories and patterns on how they build these weapon banners. Everyone said that there would never ever be a double weapon type or a weapon event wish. So here it is, 100% undeniable proof that Mihoyo does not care. They will do whatever they want. First starting with the Jade Spear. This is supposed to be Xiao's signature weapon, although it's not his best in slot. His best in slot is actually the Snap of Homa because that weapon is just absolutely broken. However, this weapon is decent. I say decent because it's a really good stat stick with very high base attack and a crit rate substat. However, its passive skill doesn't really lend its benefits to very many characters. Although it looks like it is a very good on the surface, given the fact that a lot of 
of characters snapshot. A lot of our old polearm characters snapshot their damage and their elemental bursts. That's what makes this weapon a little bit finicky. But if you don't know what this weapon does, on hit, it will increase your attack by 3.2 or 6 seconds, up to a maximum of 7 stacks. And then while in possession of the maximum stacks, you get a damage bonus of 12%. So given the fact that these stacks only last 6 seconds, and a lot of our old polearm characters snapshot their elemental bursts. This means that on your first rotation, you will very likely not have the full buffs here. In fact, I'm not even 100% sure on the mechanics of this, but I don't think you can even get stacks while you're off of the field. If someone who has the Jade Spear actually knows the mechanics of that, please let me know down in the comments. But anyway, if you cannot gain stacks while off of the field, this means that you have to spend time using your normal attacks in order to stack up the passive. And given the fact that a lot of characters just want to use their ECL and their elemental burst right away, this means that you will probably not get all of the stacks from this passive skill if you're using it on a support character like Shang Ling or Rosaria. This is not to say that the Jade Spear is bad because its stats are still really good. It's just that the passive skill is not good for a support type character. However, when it comes to the Calamity Queller, it definitely works with characters that are off the field. As we can read from the effect here, when the character equipped with this weapon is not on the field, Consummation's attack increases double. So we can very safely... So this means that this weapon's passive effect will definitely work when the character is off field. Also, the fact that this Consummation lasts for a massive 20 seconds after using an elemental skill. The many characters elemental skill is definitely less than a 20 second cooldown so you can definitely manage the uptime on this very well. The base attack is also stupidly high 741 although its attack percentage is a little bit low however if your base attack is really high the attack percentage will scale better because this attack percentage is directly based off of your character's base attack so the weapon, and your character's natural base attack. So for snapshotting characters, when you use your burst the first time, you probably won't have this buff, but then every subsequent elemental burst afterwards, you should have full buffs from this weapon. There's definitely some smaller mechanics that we need to know before we can actually make that conclusion, but this weapon definitely looks like it'll be a great weapon for support characters and characters that are off of the field. Now, when it comes to the other four-star weapons, I'll go ahead and start with the Flavonius Warbow. This is a solid freaking weapon. So much energy recharge, although it has low base attack. And then when you refine this to R5, a crit hit will have a 100% chance to generate a small amount of those white particles, which will regenerate energy for the character. So definitely getting some refinements on the Favonius weapons is really good. So that way it takes out all of the RNG, except for the RNG on your character's natural crit rate. There are a lot of support bow characters in the game as well, so this weapon is very solid for many, many of those support bow characters. The other Favonius weapon that's coming is the Greatsword version, and you know, this one has the same exact passive skill, so refining this so that you get rid of the RNG and you only rely on the RNG of crit definitely makes it really good. However, not very many Claymore characters run Favonius Greatsword as their preferred energy recharge weapon. However, that doesn't mean that it's bad to use it on burst support characters like Chong Yun and Beidou and even Sayu. The next weapon is the Flute, and to be honest, this weapon doesn't really have a place right now in the game's current meta. It's a weapon that gives you a moderate amount of base attack and then just more attack percentage, and then it has a passive ability that just kind of does extra damage, which, which is not really sought after for many characters. So the Flute is just kind of a throwaway. Next is the Witsith, and this weapon is a freaking broken 4-star Catalyst weapon for a lot of DPS Catalyst characters. Especially once you refine 5 this weapon, this thing is pretty freaking bonkers. 120% attack, 96% elemental damage bonus, or 480 extra elemental mastery when they come onto the field. It does have a relatively long cooldown of 30 seconds, however, but this extra boost in damage is absolutely huge. So a lot of DPS Catalyst characters can take advantage of this. Yanfei is a good option, as well as a nuke-focused Mona. Also a really good option for the Witset. So definitely try to pick this weapon up if you can. And if you can R5 it, then yeah, you're going to be sitting pretty. And then last on this list is the Lithic Spear. And this is a pretty solid weapon that scales better if you have Lewa characters on your team. So a full Lewa team will be able to take full use of this weapon's passive skill. So this weapon is going to give you attack percentage. And it has a very high base attack, 565 at max level. And then 
27.6 extra attack percentage at max level. And then if you have four Lila characters, you get an extra 7% attack as well as an extra 3% crit rate for each Lila character on your team. And then if you can R5 this, and then with more refinement, this goes up to even more. So at R5, it's 11% attack and 7% crit rate. Four stacks of 7% crit rate is a massive 28% extra crit rate. Although in most situations, you probably won't have a full Lila team. It'll probably be either two or three. So either 21% or 14% extra crit rate, which is still pretty pretty solid and you know since this weapon gives so much attack percentage this is not a bad weapon to run on a shenha as well if you're planning to go for shenha however right now there are only three cryo characters that hail from liwa and that's ganyu and chong yun uh, then when shenha drops that'll be the third so your fourth character will also need to be a liwa character to take full advantage of it but generally you'll want an animal character and we don't have a liwa animal character that has the ability to absorb elements Unless for some reason Kazuha is considered a Liwa character, but I don't think he is. Because he did come out before Inazuma was actually released. Although it says he's from Inazuma, it says that he's part of Liwa's Crux fleet. So if anyone that has one of those lithic weapons or wants to find out if Kazuha is either a Liwa character or an Inazuma character, definitely drop that down in the comment down below. All right, now it's time for the second half banners, Zhongli and Ganyu, and I'm pretty sure most of you guys already know who you're going for. Zhongli, if you don't have him, is probably the best pick here because he just makes the game super easy, makes it so that you don't really need to try. The shield is just so strong that all you really need to do is just focus on damage and you no longer have to focus on dodging and staying alive. His shield also reduces the resistance of enemies, so Zhongli is just the obvious pick if you already have yourself a DPS character. And then Ganyu, she has aged incredibly well. Her damage output is still absolutely insane. Whether you run a Morgana team or a Melt team, Ganyu's damage is pretty freaking bonkers. Although her raw damage is actually not that good. She definitely requires some support characters. I've also seen some people say, oh, just shoot the floor with Ganyu and you'll still hit 50k damage. Those people are absolutely delusional as that's not true. You will not be hitting 50k with just shooting the ground with Ganyu unless she is absolutely wailed out. You also lose a lot of the effects if you don't actually shoot enemies. So if you don't like bow type gameplay and you can't shoot your enemies or if you're on mobile, then you might want to reconsider Ganyu. Let's start talking about Xing Chu, Beido, and Yanfei as these are all very solid characters. Yanfei definitely one of the underrated ones in that bunch as she's actually a pretty good pyro DPS character. Xing Chu is also just a very strong hydro applicator and off-field damage dealer and then Beto is just a solid character although she does require some constellations in order for her to shine most notably her c2 and her c6 really does increase her damage output by a lot c2 allowing her elemental burst to jump between two extra targets increasing the aoe damage essentially and then her c6 which reduces the electro res of surrounding opponents by 15 percent same thing with xing chu his c6 is greatly recommended so that you can pop his elemental burst pretty much off of cooldown because this regenerates so much energy for him and then his c4 increases the damage of his e skill by a multiplicative 50 percent so you can kind of create some one shot xing chu builds with this Constellation. And then decreasing the Hydro Res of opponents by 15% when they get hit by Sword Rain attacks just increases his damage output even more. As for Yanfei, her C6 definitely increases her damage output by quite a bit as she gets an extra Scarlet Seal, allowing you to reach this final charge attack damage. Some other constellations that are definitely really good for her though is her C4, which allows you to go for a shield build. So Shield Yanfei is definitely a really good option as well. Although you do not have 100% uptime on this shield, there are definitely some team comps that can make great use of this. Also, the fact that Yanfei is a pyro character so you can get a shield as well as pyro resonance increasing your attack by even more yeah so the second so the second half banner is looking really really good like really freaking good xing chu is a must pick if you're running any kind of pyro dps character and picking up his constellations is very important yanfei and her constellations is a solid pick if you want to go for a shield yanfei build and it's definitely underrated when it comes to vaporize comps mount comps and even overload comps as all of those builds are definitely worth building for and playing. I definitely recommend her overload build as that's actually a lot of fun. And Beto, a very solid unit, although it takes some constellations in order for her to start shining. So if your Beto is missing some constellations, now might be the time to pick some up. 
Also, parry mechanics are the coolest mechanics in any game, so learn to hit those full counters. All right, now weapon banners for the second half of 2.4. We have Amos Bow and Vortex Vanquisher for our five-star options, and then our four-star options, Sacrificial Bow, Pavonia Sword, Dragon's Bane, Pavonius Codex, and the Lithic Blade. Starting with the five stars first, I'm sure that a lot of you guys really want this Amos Bow, as this is definitely Ganyu's 100% best in slots. So you Ganyu simps out there, you definitely want this weapon. However, since it's being paired with the Vortex Vanquisher, which is not great, it's okay, but it's not amazing. If you don't remember what this weapon does, it has a 608 base attack as well as giving you an extra 49.6% extra attack bonus. And then it increases your shield strength by 20%. And then scoring hits on opponents will increase your attack further 4% for 8 seconds up to 5 stacks. And then if you're protected by a shield when you get those stacks, that attack increases doubled from 4 to 8 at R1. So there's a lot of attack percentage here that you can get from this weapon, although it requires you to be shielded. Although it requires you to be shielded. Whereas with the Amos Bow, you just get so much extra attack percentage as well as some extra damage bonus on your normal and charge attacks. So for those of you guys who are gunning for the Amos Bow, if you have a polearm character that doesn't mind having the Vortex Vanquisher, then you can definitely do it, take your chances. But Amos Bow does have a chance to show up in the standard banner. So if you get really lucky, you can still get the Amos Bow from there. Vortex Vanquisher though, this has not shown up since December of last year. So it's been a really long time since this weapon last showed up. Now as for the four star weapons, the lineup is pretty decent. Sacrificial Bow is a really, really good bow, especially for the likes of Diona, as she can get off two E skills right away, generating a ton of elemental particles. So this just makes it so that Diona becomes an incredible cryo battery. There are a couple of other characters that can make use of this cooldown reset, but Diona is definitely one of the best ones. Next up is the Favonius Codex. Again, with all the Favonius weapons being able to R5 these so that you get rid of the RNG here, where the RNG is all just based off of your character's crit is really good. As for what characters can use this, there actually isn't really that many characters that want to use this at least currently in the game right now. Mona can use it if you want to put her more in the support slot. Sucrose can use it, although definitely one of her better options is the Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayer. And then there aren't really many other Catalyst characters that really need to battery other characters. Lisa is very seldom used. Kokomi's better weapons are the Prototype Amber and also Thrilling Tales. Yanfei is not really meant to be a support type character. Klee as well is not really meant to be a support type character. Ningguang is also supposed to be more of a burst DPS character. And so with that, there just aren't very many other Catalyst characters in the game that can really take advantage of the Favonius Codex right now. The next weapon is the Dragon's Bane, and this weapon is actually a very, very strong weapon, especially for the likes of Xiangling and Hu Tao. Especially once R5, this weapon, pretty dang good. If you don't have any other 5-star options, Dragon's Bane is super, super solid. And then lastly is the Lithic Blade, which has the exact same passive as the Lithic Spear, where it'll increase your attack and crit rate based on the number of Liwa characters that you have on your team. This doesn't mean that you are forced to use this weapon on a Liwa character. You can definitely put this on other Claymore characters, Characters, but it just means that you are only going to be able to triple stack this weapon instead of quadruple stack the weapon. And three stacks definitely isn't bad either, especially if you can refine this even further. Anyway, those are pretty much all of my thoughts on these new banners. And so depending on where you're at in the game, I would definitely recommend you go for either Zhongli or Ganyu if you're not wishing to break the bank and open up your wallet. Zhongli definitely makes this game pretty much trivial for a lot of content. And Ganyu is an amazing cryo DPS character. Cryo characters in general just have some of the best. The cryo element just definitely has some of the best things going for it, especially in terms of the massive amounts of crit rate they can get with the four piece blizzard set and elemental reactions. Shenha is definitely a very niche character right now, so if you don't have characters that can really utilize her kit very well, then she's definitely a skip. And choosing between Xiao or Ganyu as your DPS, Ganyu definitely takes the least amount of investment versus Xiao. Ganyu also has a little bit more freedom in what kind of playstyle you want to go for, that being a freeze comp or a melt comp. Whereas with Xiao, you definitely have just one way of playing him, and that's just building a team around him in order to make sure that he keeps his burst 24-7. As for the weapon banner, the Favonius Warboat and the Witsith are looking like really good picks for this, and the Calamity Queller is looking to be like a really good support weapon for polearm characters. 
Whereas on this other side, the Amos Bow is a very strong option for Ganyu. And then the four star lineup, the Sacrificial Bow and the Dragon's Bane are really solid. I totally forgot to talk about the Favonius Sword, but it kind of is in the same spot as the Favonius Codex. There aren't very many sword characters that can make use of that energy recharge as we have the Sacrificial Sword, which is Xing Chu's best for his support capabilities. But anyway, guys, let me know down in the comments what banners you're pulling on or if you're going to be saving for 2.5 and Yai Miko. I think I can already envision most of the comments. I think most of the comments are going to say Ganyu, Xiao, or save for 2.5. But anyway, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you guys in this video today. Help me reach my goal of hitting 10k subs. Drop a like on this video. And until next time, I will see you guys later.